As we see the principles in law in natural world, so there are the principles in law in spiritual realm, in the realm of the Holy Spirit. And one of the spiritual law is the principle of beholding, the principle of looking. By looking at the objective, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, even though you look at the objective through the natural eyes, but right away, that objective will be pulled through your natural eyes and they will go into the spiritual eyes and they will become spiritual visions and dreams. Then the Holy Spirit works through the spiritual visions and dreams because visions and dreams are the language of the Holy Ghost. Bible says in the later day, in the last day, God is going to pour out His Spirit upon all the flesh. And your son shall see vision, and you all shall dream dreams. The Holy Spirit, by giving visions and dreams, He converses with you, and He communicates with you. So having the definite visions and dreams by the guidance of the Holy Spirit is the way through which God is going to perform great miracles because Bible says God holds those things which be not as if they were. So only to work together with God, you must work in the world of visions and dreams because we are limited by the times and spaces and we can't call those things which be not as if they were in natural sense. So to work together with God and to be in the God's sense, we are forced to go beyond the limitation of time and space. And to go beyond the limitation of time and space, we have got to be led in the world of visions and dreams. Yeah. Then in the visions and dreams, we are going to go over beyond the limitation of time and space, and we can call those things which we not as if they were. Bible says, whatsoever you desire, then when you pray, believe that you have received them, then you shall have them. Yes. Even so you have not those things which you have, have prayed. But Bible says, you should think as if you have already received. Yes. How can you do that? Only in your visions and dreams. So, God can produce mighty faith in you through the principle of looking through the principle of visions and dreams. When Abraham came out of Egypt, he came together with his nephew, Lot, and he was a thorn in his flesh. Do you know why Abraham had such a trouble in Canaan? At the beginning, when God called Abraham out of his own hometown, he gave him a strict command. He said, leave your hometown, your family, your father's house and come to the place where I direct you only together with your own wife. But he obeyed and he disobeyed. He obeyed God's command and he left his town and he went to the land of Canaan. But he disobeyed by taking his nephew Lot. He brought his father's house together with him. There was reason God was displeased. And that was the reason when he came to the land of Canaan, there was great dearth. And he went down to the land of Egypt because he disobeyed when he first started. And when he came up from the land of Egypt to the Canaan, still God was sticky because he was living in disobedience. So finally, when he sent the Lord away, then God began to speak to him. God said, Abraham, lift up your head, look to the northward and southward, eastward and westward, the land which you see, that land I will give to you and to your children forever. The land which you see. So Abraham, I'm sure, went up to the top of mountain and I'm sure that he reached as high as he could rise up and soon the object that land came through his eyes to his mind and that turned into the visions and dreams he dreamed he visualized 
of possessing whole land for him and for his children. And through that vision and dream, God began to work and he received faith. Now, the children of Abraham is still possessing that land. When Abraham was quite old, and he was quite disgusted and discouraged because he did not have his son. In Orient, having the son and the continue the bloodline is a life or death problem. In Orient, if ladies could not produce son, then that is eternal shame on her life. Sarah could not give birth to a son, and Abraham was in a desperate situation. But one day God spoke to Abraham, said, Abraham, I am your defense, I am your blessing. Abraham began to complain, Father, what defense do I need anymore? What blessing do I need anymore? Because I have no descendant. I will bequeath all of the asset what I have to my servant. Then God said, oh no, no. You will bequeath all of your things to your son who is going to be born through you. So one evening when Abraham was quite asleep, then God came and shook him up. Abraham, wake up, come, come out. So he came out of his tent. God said, counting those stars. You know, God will never ask you to do silly things. When God asks you to do something which you can't understand, just obey. So he began to count the stars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ein, zwei, zwei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, ten, hana, du, sen, net, das, yes, il, yod, au, yol, itchi, ni, san, si, ho, ro, shichi, hachi, chu, chu. Kept on counting, kept on counting. Finally, those stars became innumerable and he was dizzy. Then God said, my son, your children are going to be as numerous as the stars. He was greatly impressed and moved and tear filled his eyes through the tears and eyes when he looked into the faces of stars. Suddenly it seemed as if all the faces of stars changed into the faces of children and he felt as if they were shouting to him, Father Abraham! Oh, he was impressed. By looking at those stars through his eyes of flesh, those uh, number of stars came into his heart and became his visions and dream. Since that time, whether he sleep or wake, whether he stand up or sit down, he could only see children and children and children and children. He was completely overwhelmed by the children and that uh, vision was so clear in his heart and God began to speak with him because visions and dreams are the language of the Holy Spirit and God's power came through that visions and dream and actually he was rejuvenated and then he produced beautiful son by the name of Isaac. The Isaac means big smile. If you ever would like to have a big smile in your life, home or business, you must have the same kind of visions and dream. Because through the vision, God gives faith. Bible says Abraham was great unbeliever till he saw those stars. But when he counted those stars and when he received the visions and dream, then next the verse says that Abraham believed and God took his faith as his righteousness. When you lack faith, Concentrate on the promise of the word of God. Create visions and dreams in your heart. Through the visions and dreams, God speaks to you and God imparts his faith into your heart. You remember the story in Numbers when Israelite followed out uh, Moses and they were wandering through the wilderness and finally they got tired of the manna. They were tired of the lack of the water and the difficulty of the road. So suddenly, few of them began to complain. And that complaint became an epidemic disease. And that epidemic disease began to spread. And the whole three million of them began to cry and uh, complain to God and to Moses. They said, we don't like this manna, this coarse food. 
and we are suffering because of lack of the water. And this way is too hard. Why did you take us out of Egypt? And God was angry because of their complaint. Suddenly, God sent a fiery serpent from all over. And serpent began to fly all over the places. And they began to bite the people. And people were poisoned. They were dying by the scores all over. Then they came to Moses and said, Moses, we repent. We did the wrong things. We made a mistake of complaining. Please pray for so that God may take away this fiery serpent. Then when Moses prayed, God commanded Moses, Moses, build from the serpent and hang up the serpent. And let those who are all dying by being bitten by the serpent, let them look at the serpent hanging on the pole. Then they shall be healed. In the Old Testament, God says that the Jehovah's cursed shall be hung upon the pole. So it means that when Moses hang up that bronze serpent on the high pole, that means that God had judged the serpent and God had divested the serpent of the poisonous power. Amen. Every Israelite knew about that. So Moses hurriedly made the bronze serpent and nailed the serpent on a high pole and he lifted it up. Then he asked all of those bitten people to look, to look, to look. They were all looking up to the bronze serpent hanging on the pole. As soon as I they watched, and behold, great thing happened. When they watched, they knew that the power of the fiery serpent was destroyed. And the serpent was divested of the poisonous power. They could visualize, they could dream that the power of Satan was destroyed on the pole. And they were looking at that by and by, by the Holy Spirit, they were identified with that victory. So the principle of the visions and dreams are very important. In my life, God has shown me this over and over again. In 1958, when I was starting my church in the slum area, I was absolutely, abjectedly poor. And we were having service under our old marine tent. It was so torn that the lane was leaking terribly. And in the rainy day, I had more frogs under the tent than the people. And I had only five members from first month till sixth month. And at that time, my wife was one of the members. She was a small girl. Yeah. Later, I fell in love with her. Yeah. So she is my first member of my church. <laughs> and she knows me very well. So how much I was discouraged. Every time, whenever after service, I would come to her. I said, this is end. I'm finished up. I'm leaving. And I sure I thought I, I knew that I was not called into the ministry. But strange thing occurred. The reality was severe. But whenever I knelt down and prayed, then God ah, gave me a vision. Spiritual vision. It's not a real a vivid vision. I had spiritual impression in my heart. I was praying and I was looking. A church which had 3,000 members. When I closed my eyes and when I began to pray, there I saw 3,000 people all gathered together, worshiping the Lord, praising God. I was looking at that vision. Then when I opened the eyes, I, don't, I didn't see anything. I saw only torn tent, miserable church. <laughs> so I was sandwiched. I wonder if, wondered if I should follow after that vision or follow this reality stark reality so I would come to my girlfriend at that time she was my girlfriend I said you know soon I'm going to preach to 3,000 people in the church she said are you in your right mind 
Since you may say that to me, but don't say to any others, they will say that you are crazy. <laughs> but I was looking at that visions and dream. Whenever I prayed, I was looking at that visions and dream. And by the power of Holy Spirit, by and by, I was being identified with that visions and dream. Suddenly, I felt that I was already the past of 3,000 members and I was among them because I was completely identified by, by the power of Holy Spirit to that vision. I was pulled to that vision and that vision was pulled to me and we became one together and suddenly something happened in my life because I was tremendously transformed into the image of that church. Suddenly, I began to walk as if I was a pastor of the 3,000. I began to talk and preach with great authority as if I were already past the 3,000. And so people laughed at me. They saw the sudden transformation of my personality in life. And I also wondered about me, but I was overpowered and overwhelmed by the power of that vision and dream. And I believed tremendous faith came into my heart. And through that vision, through that faith, God began to move miraculously. And I saw that vision in 1958, 1964, I was preaching to 3,000 members. Yeah. What you see, I will give that land to you and to your children. What do you see this morning? Do you see misery? Do you see sickness and disease? Do you see failure? Do you see poverty? Do you see unhappiness? So many people are seeing those things in their lives every day. Still they wonder why they have so many unhappiness and tragedy in their home. What a contradiction. What you see. You and your children are going to have that. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we should be very careful about what we see. By seeing with your eyes of flesh or eyes of spirit, you form two things into the vision and dream. And through the vision and dream, either God speaks or they will speak. So, when Paul gave this scripture, Paul knew what he was giving, but we all, with unveiled face, beholding, please repeat after me, as in a mirror, Amen. the glory of the Lord, glory of the Lord. are being transformed Amen. into the same image Amen. from glory to glory. By the Spirit of the Lord. Same image. I tell you, same image. I'm sure that you have looked into the mirror this morning. Before you came out to church, I'm sure that you went to your bathroom and washed your face and you look into the mirror. We need another mirror. When you get saved, God has given you another mirror, the mirror of vision and dream. And we must use the mirrors of vision stream constantly. Here, Paul says that when unveil the face, that means that with an understanding face, when we look to Jesus Christ, but still, we can't really see the physical form of Jesus Christ because he lived 2,000 years ago. But still, the Bible says that when we behold, Jesus Christ. How? How can we behold as we look into the mirror? That means through the visions and dreams. Hallelujah. Then we are going to be transformed into the same image. So today, I recommend you to join your heart and face together with me to behold the glory of Jesus Christ as we look into the mirror.